Hola a todos, bienvenidos a este webinar, gracias por acompañarnos. Yo soy Beatriz de WN de México. El día de hoy nos acompaña Backlab. Hola Backlab. Que es ingeniero en ventas de Simple Hardware y el webinar The Power of Simplicity. Nos va a hablar un poco sobre el dispositivo Simple Pack, que es un dispositivo que tiene muchos sensores y hasta 50 modos de operación, lo cual permite resolver muchísimos casos de uso. Y hoy Backlab nos va a hablar sobre 10 casos de uso que son solucionables con este dispositivo, eh, que algunos de ellos ya los estamos aplicando aquí en México. Y bueno, bienvenido Backlab. Eh, ah, tendremos una primera parte de 45 minutos y pueden escribir sus preguntas en el chat o en el cuadro de preguntas y al final las estaremos respondiendo. Y bueno, en, bueno va, va a ser en español, pero tal vez en algún momento pueda haber algunos espacios en inglés. Eh, y bueno, les vamos a compartir este webinar eh, grabado después y la presentación um, el día de hoy por la tarde. Bienvenido a Cloud. Hola, hola a todas. Uh, muchas gracias Beatriz. Uh, muchas gracias por la oportunidad uh, de estar aquí. Uh, voy a empezar con una proclamación uh, que Sigfox es solo una red de radio, nada más. Solo una red de radio. Um, pero de todas maneras es una red bastante capable. Vosotros ya sabéis, uh, uh, y uh, WND uh, los va a contar cuáles son las ventajas de la red Sigfox que están construyendo en México. Um, pero lo que quiero decir es que es solo una red. Si queréis ganar dinero, hay que tener mucho más que solo la red, porque la red es solo un medio Uh, que los permite uh, mover mensajes o mandar mensajes desde un dispositivo a la, a, a la Internet, a la red grande de Internet. Pues, um, un poquito a la historia, de, uh, a la historia mía. Uh, pues yo trabajo ya uh, casi tres años con Sigfox. Hemos empezado en la República Checa, uh, hemos bueno, construido la red en, en la República Checa, uh, también hacemos la red en Eslovaquia, uh, estamos en el grupo que hace Sigfox en uh, Suiza, en Austria. Pues tengo ya tres años de experiencia de vender, uh, de vender IoT y um, lo que es más importante es vender soluciones no, unas, no unos joyos, no solo unos dispositivos, pero soluciones. Y os quiero mostrar uh, cómo podéis uh, poner um, juntos todos los trocitos pequeños, que un trocito es la red, el trocito, uh, otro trocito es el dispositivo, luego también la plataforma, y uh, cómo lo podéis poner todo junto para que ganéis dinero. Voy a probar mi español. Uh, si sí voy a tener algunas dificultades con, con unas palabras o algo así, voy a cambiar a inglés. Lo siento mucho, pero hace, hace, ya, uh, hace ya tiempo que, uh, que estudié español. Pues pierdo palabras, pero voy a probar, ¿no? Pues hace, hace dos meses estuvimos con, uh, con mis compañeros en México. Aquí veis um, el dibujo. Carmen está, uh, Beatriz está, está ahí. Uh, también podéis ver el, el jefe de ventas de, de WVND. Y para los que no saben dónde está la República Checa, um, aquí está un, po, un, una, un pequeño mapa. Estamos en el corazón de Europa. Uh, ahora estoy en Praga. Pues bienvenidos a Praga. Y Va a ser, espero que un mes y vamos a tener el nieve aquí. Estos son mis tres hijos, uh, mis tres uh, niños um, jugando con, con la nieve. Pues uh, tengo una pequeña pregunta, un, un, una competición. 
Uh, cuando estuvimos en México, uh, he visto una calle que se llama uh, Avenida Presidente Masaryk. Uh, el presidente Masaryk fue nuestro primer presidente de la República Checa y Eslovaquia. Y um, les quiero preguntar si sabéis dónde está la calle. Pues es una pequeña competición para que podáis pensar un poquito uh, mientras estoy hablando sobre, uh, sobre lo que tengo aquí. Pues um, trabajé tres años con el operador, pero luego hace, hace un año um, hemos, hemos uh, con un grupo de gente, hemos creado una, uh, una compañía que hace hardware. Uh, hacemos solo Sigfox. Um, Hacemos unos dispositivos uh, que uh, no solo, uh, que son solo Sigfox, no hacemos la Roventa IoT, no hacemos nada más, solo Sigfox, porque Sigfox es bastante complicado. Uh, pues hacerlo bien necesita tiempo. Uh, la historia es que hemos empezado con un botón, con un solo botón. Uh, con un solo botón pequeño ya hace dos años, uh, pero la cosa es, uh, y lo voy a hablar un poquito más uh, hoy, que con un botón, si, con, si hacéis la combinación, el botón con la posición de la red Sigfox, uh, con la combinación de, la, de acelerómetro, uh, botón y la posición de la red, uh, estuvimos capaces de, uh, de hacer más que seis modos, más que, um, más que seis usos, uh, pues primero el botón, luego uh, el tracker con la precisión de algo como, uh, como kilómetro, algo así, uh, con la combinación del acelerómetro Uh, fuimos capaces de hacer inclinación uh, de, uh, por ejemplo, de, um, uh, de la, de, del gate uh, y, y, y mucho más. Pero voy a empezar, uh, voy, voy a continuar. Esto es nuestro porto, portfolio uh, que tenemos. Esto es uh, lo que hemos mostrado en en la IMC en México, uh, pero voy a hablar uh, mucho más sobre lo que podemos hacer uh, con la red y con los dispositivos que, que nuestro portfolio. Pues uh, uno puede pensar que eso solo es un botón, no un dispositivo pequeño que tiene un botón, pero lo que quiero mostrar, mostrarles, uh, lo que quiero decir que con Sigfox y con las soluciones en la red Sigfox hay que pensar un poquito más. Uh, puede ser que pensar mucho más que solo que lo que veis desde, uh, desde fuera. ¿no? Uh, hay que mirarse un poquito dentro y hay que tener unas experiencias técnicas, pero también combinadas con las experiencias de, de business y pensar en dinero primero. Pues lo que puede parecer uh, en, el primer, en la primera vista uh, que el dispositivo que, uh, que tenemos es un botón solo, pero si, si miramos un poquito más dentro uh, del dispositivo, veis que tenemos mucho más sensores. Y lo que quiero decir es que la red Sigfox solo uh, sirve, sirve solo como, uh, como para mandar los mensajes, pero lo que hay en los mensajes, los datos, la información que hay en los men mensajes, lo es lo más importante. Y luego lo que hacéis con los datos en vuestra plataforma o qué solución podéis proveer a vuestros clientes qué problemas vais a solucionar con, uh, con los dispositivos conectados en la red. Lo es más importante, porque lo, uh, eso es lo que, uh, lo que gana dinero. ¿no? Pues voy a explicarles un poquito más que tenemos en, en el dispositivo nuestro que se llama SimplePack. Uh, tenemos en uh, el Wi-Fi, 
uh, el sensor de Wi-Fi. El Wi-Fi nos sirve para que uh, conectáis a, a los, uh, a los uh, access points uh, de Wi-Fi para que podáis comunicar con, con el Internet. Pero lo que hacemos con, con Wi-Fi es que escuchamos solo uh, a los señales uh, que están alrededor del dispositivo. ¿Qué redes hay alrededor? Es lo mismo como uh, que podéis hacer con su, con su teléfono si vais a si vais a, a buscar por las redes de Wi-Fi que están disponibles en su lugar, pues lo, hace, lo hacemos en el dispositivo y luego los identificadores únicos que identifican la red de Wi-Fi, esos, esos identificadores mandamos por la red Sigfox y luego en, la, en el servidor podemos resolver a los identificadores únicos a una posición. Puede ser que sabéis que la red Sigfox tiene precisión de localización uh, de, de kilómetros, uh, de unos a uh, 10 kilómetros, pero con la precisión de, de la uh, WPS, Wi-Fi Positioning System, podéis alcanzar hasta, hasta 10 metros de precisión. Uh, pues uh, un dispositivo que tiene un, un sensor de Wi-Fi les puede servir como un tracker. Global. Luego les voy a mostrar un mapa uh, donde, está, donde podéis ver uh, la diferencia entre, uh, entre la precisión de la red y de Wi-Fi. Lo que tenemos también en el dispositivo, uh, en, el, en el botón, uh, es, un, uh, es un sensor de temperatura y humedad. Um, luego tenemos el, el transceiver de, de Sigfox. Lo que hemos uh, hecho es que cambiamos de, de Visual, que el módulo que está, uh, está disponible en el mercado, uh, a Spirit2, que es un uh, transceiver de, uh, de Sigfox mucho más avanzado y tiene, uh, la consum uh, consume tres veces menos que, uh, que el Visual. Podemos, pues podemos mandar tres uh, veces más mensajes que con otras soluciones que hay en el mercado. Pero lo más importante uh, es que uh, nuestro dispositivo es multizone, pues es, una, uh, es un dispositivo que trabaja en todas las zonas de, de Sigfox, pues trabaja uh, alrededor del mundo, alrededor del globo, ¿no? Pues en todas las zonas uh, donde, donde hay Sigfox, Uh, el dispositivo nuestro va a funcionar. Um, pues es un, es un multiband uh, antena uh, que está conectada con el transceiver. Uh, luego, lo que tenemos en el dispositivo, que es, uh, que, uh, que es un um, acelerómetro de tres axis, three axis uh, accelerometer, uh, y un magnetómetro que, uh, que sirve como un compás. ¿no? Pues el acelerómetro es un sensor que, que les va a decir uh, la fuerza de gravitación o de la aceleración del dispositivo. Pues le mandamos si el dispositivo se está moviendo así o así a la izquierda o si el coche está acelerando o si, por ejemplo, la puerta se abre y, y tal. Luego, al otro lado del dispositivo hay un botón. Uh, tenemos un sensor de, de, de magnet, de magneto, de imán, imán se, uh, se llama en español. Uh, pues um, uh, podemos hacer, uh, por ejemplo, en dos trozos, si tenéis un imán, uh, podemos detectar si el imán está cerca del dispositivo o no. Uh, también tenemos un sensor de, de la luz. Uh, que podéis hacer, para, por ejemplo, para sentir si la pantalla um, uh, está funcionando uh, o si uh, la luz está apagada o, um, o no, o si el dispositivo está fuera o dentro, uh, de, um, si está ex, expuesto a, una, a, a la luz o no. Um, y luego también tenemos el audio indicator, uh, pues el dispositivo nuestro puede hacer uh, el sonido. 
pues lo que quiero mostrar, que puede parecer que un dispositivo es solo un botón, pero si miráis adentro vais a ver que hay mucho más que solo un botón. Voy a hablar un poquito más de la localización de Sigfox. Pues lo que, lo que podéis ver aquí es um, el dispositivo ese, uh, pequeñito, que viaja desde Praga a, a España. Esto es solo un trocito de, de, del viaje. Y podéis ver que podéis localizar um, uh, el dispositivo con una precisión bastante buena. Eso, uh, ese dispositivo uh, viaje por un, por un camión, uh, por una carretera a París y luego a Madrid. Tengo un dibujito más. Uh, eso es un Um, hace, hace 14 días que estuve en, uh, en, uh, en, uh, en el Golfo, en, uh, en Dubai y viajé por el avión y el dispositivo sirve en múltiples zonas, pues funciona en la República Checa y también en, uh, en, Ara en Arabia. Y podéis ver que el mismo dispositivo uh, puede mostrar la posición uh, en la República Checa, en Arabia o en México. Otro, otra muestra, eso es un dispositivo que, viaje de, uh, que estaba viajando de París a Nor Noruega. Uh, pues si por ejemplo es un container uh, con con goods, con cosas, uh, podéis ver dónde está, si está en el lugar uh, donde puede estar o no. Bueno, pues lo que puede ser es, es un tracker. Uh, uh, saber dónde el dispositivo está uh, puede ser bastante precioso y lo que hacemos en uh, nuestro dispositivo es que los podemos uh, mandar Uh, los datos de los, de, de los otros sensores, por ejemplo, temperatura uh, o la luz o, uh, o la, el movimiento el acceler, um, de, del acelerómetro junto con la posición de Wi-Fi o de la red Sigfox. Pues uh, uh, si, lo, si lo voy a traducir en, en una lengua de Disney, uh, podéis saber dónde está, por ejemplo, uh, la nevera con Coca-Cola. Uh, si es un track con, uh, con Coca-Cola, pues sabéis dónde está y cuál es la temperatura en el track. Luego, otra cosa que podéis hacer con el acelerómetro es que llamamos el Vibra, uh, Vibro Diagnostics, uh, en inglés, Vibro, Vibro Diagnostics, um, que significa uh, que podéis medir las vibraciones de las cosas. Uh, podéis imaginar que eso es una silla uh, y... Uh, os mandamos si la persona está sentando en la silla o no. Pues, uh, por ejemplo, en uh, las oficinas grandes uh, podemos decir a los managers si, uh, si la gente está trabajando en la silla o si la silla está ocupada o no, solo con un dispositivo que cuesta 15 euros. Uh, pero eh, imagínense, imagínense uh, dar este dispositivo a un motor uh, o a un a un, um, a, un um, a un coche por ejemplo uh, o a una, a, un, a una máquina que está en, en la cita de construcción uh, os puede decir si uh, la máquina está marchando o no pues lo que hacemos con las compañías que, uh, que rentan que hacen renting uh, de cosas, leasing, uh, pueden decir si las cosas, uh, si, si las máquinas se están usando o no. Pues luego uh, las compañías que rentan las cosas uh, pueden rentar uh, las máquinas uh, por, horas de, por horas de operación, uh, no, no uh, de, de los días, por ejemplo. Solo. Aquí puedes ver uh, cómo, cómo puede aparecer el, el grafo. Uh, eso, es, eso, eso son tres sillas. Uh, pues podéis ver que, 
que yo uh, ese día de, uh, de noviembre uh, no estuve en el trabajo, pero Camila o Tomás estuvieron en el trabajo, uh, estuvieron trabajando y luego hemos montado el mismo dispositivo, dispositivo es, siempre estoy hablando sobre el mismo dispositivo porque tiene, tiene varios sensores y uh, varios sensores y varios modos eh, que son los uh, modos de operación y podéis ver que si ponen el dispositivo uh, a una coffee machine, una máquina que hace, uh, que hace cafés, uh, podéis contar uh, los cafés que, que la máquina ha producido durante el día. Uh, Aquí tenemos el dispositivo pequeño, lo que veis aquí es el, es el botón, es el dispositivo que está uh, en, en la máquina de café. Okay. Eh, eso es la cosa. Pero lo que podéis hacer, uh, y también tenemos un caso en, uh, en, um, en United Kingdom, um, en UK, uh, que medimos la inclinación uh, de, de, de los... ¿Cómo se llaman? De los... Uh, ¿Pole inclination? Postes. Postes, postes. Muchas gracias, Beatriz. Postes de electricidad. Uh, pues solo con un acelerómetro uh, podéis medir la inclinación del poste y uh, uh, lo que uh, luego uh, es el servicio al cliente. Sabéis si el poste está... Uh, Está, está bien o está, por ejemplo, fallando, cayendo, uh, pues los técnicos uh, que, de, de la compañía energética luego saben exactamente dónde está la malfunción, dónde está dónde se, la red se ha cortado. Um, um, también con la inclinación, uh, lo que hacemos con, con el inclinómetro o el acelerómetro, uh, lo que podemos hacer es, por ejemplo, medir uh, si la, uh, si la ¿cómo se llama? el vaso, el waste collection, uh, la basura, uh, estaba colectada o no. Uh, porque sabemos si, si se ha movido o no. Pues um, esto es. Luego, lo que hacemos es que uh, si hay, por ejemplo, el fire extinguisher, Uh, no sé cómo se llama en español, lo siento mucho, pero uh, si lo montáis a una, a una cosa que tiene que estar en el lugar, uh, no se mueve por, por, por toda su vida, no se mueve, pero por ejemplo en un caso de emergencia se va a mover, uh, se va a usar, vais a saber si se ha usado o no, por eso uh, uh, usamos el simple pack y uh, el accelerómetro para, uh, para los fire extinguishers. También uh, lo que hacemos en la República Checa hay uh, como uh, mobile road signs uh, um, que, que se, bueno, que por ejemplo um, en, en las rutas uh, se ponen esas, uh, esos signs. Uh, pues se mueven en, en, en varias zonas y medimos si están, están arriba o, o si, se, se, han, se han caído. Uh, también um, con inclinómetro o con acelerómetro podemos, uh, podemos medir si el scaffolding, que es uh, la cosa que está en las zonas de construcción que está bien, o uh, si no hay ningún problema. So, si hay algún problema que se mueve o algo así. Y uh, la última cosa que podemos hacer, si hay uh, alguna, uh, si hay alguna puerta o alguna, uh, alguna caja de, por ejemplo, de electricidad o algo así, que uh, solo se abre, uh, que solo abren los técnicos, uh, podemos decir que, que uh, por ejemplo, Uh, se ha abierto uh, en un momento que, que no, no es permitido uh, abrir la, la, la puerta. Uh, uh, um, pues eso, eso es um, el dispositivo que, que está en la casa, en la caja. 
uh, esto es el PCB. Y lo que hacemos también, que podemos, um, uh, bueno, que hacemos, uh, que podemos conectar un, unos sensores externales uh, a la, al mismo dispositivo que está dentro, pues um, saca, sacamos el dispositivo de la caja que tenemos, de la caja plástica, y usamos solo lo que está dentro y luego montamos en, en otro sensor. Por ejemplo, lo que veis en, en, uh, en, uh, en la derecha, Uh, son unos sensores que solo mandan um, uh, abierto o cerrado. Uh, esos sensores se usan, por ejemplo, en los, en los camiones, uh, pues lo montan en, en la puerta del camión y luego van a saber si el camión está abierto o no. Y juntándolo con la posición de Wi-Fi, de la Wi-Fi Positioning System, o de la red de Sigfox, um, la compañía que opera a los camiones puede decir, bueno, el camión está en, en por ejemplo, México de EF y está en la, en la calle Avenida de Mazarik y está abierto. Uh, pues eso es una cosa que luego uh, puede, tener, uh, que puede tener valor. Uh, también... <ríe> Um, uh, lo que hacemos con un, uh, con un partner aquí en, uh, en, um, en, en Dutch, en Netherlands, um, en Holanda, uh, son los, es un control de ratones o control de, de mouse control. Pues uh, lo que veis aquí que montamos uh, el sensor nuestro con, uh, solo, con solo un switch abierto o cerrado. A, a un dispositivo esto y luego podemos mandar uh, si hay un um, rato en el uh, um, si está o no uh, el business value el valor está uh, que por ejemplo hay normas en, en Unión Europea que dicen que si está el ratón 14 días puede bueno puede, puede hacer pone cómo se llama Uh, enfermedades pueden, uh, y tal, pues uh, hay que cambiar, uh, cambiar el dispositivo uh, rápido para que no esté el ratón muerto en, uh, en, en, en eso. Pues uh, mandamos el mensaje si, uh, si está abierta o cerrada, si está el ratón dentro o no. Uh, aquí es una uh, otra cosa de, 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 de fire extinguisher, otro dibujo. Aquí veis, uh, es una puerta, eso es uh, un dibujo de, de, de South Africa, uh, de la África del Sur, uh, donde hay varias puertas de, de la electricidad, de, de, los, de las bote, uh, botellas de, 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 de gas. De, uh, Todas esas cosas uh, se mueven, se mueven uh, se, se, uh, los roban porque, porque es de metal y nosotros podemos detectar si, si se mueven o no. Bueno, uh, voy, a, uh, voy a cambiar un poquito, uh, voy a cambiar a un dispositivo uh, otro que tenemos uh, en Europa. Uh, hay un problema con uh, fugo de agua, Beatriz, fugo de agua. Sí, uh, o inundación. Sí, sí, sí. Puede hacer que um, um, en las casas uh, con los washing machines o uh, uh, debajo de, de... Lo siento, pero voy a cambiar eso a inglés porque estoy Perdón, uh, estoy perdiendo palabras y no me siento muy, muy cómodo. So I will switch into English. So um, uh, the problem we have in uh, Europe is that uh, frequently happens that uh, in households, for example, with washing machines or other, um, other machines that are in, in the homes, there are problems uh, that That, uh, the, that the water can leak out of these machines. Or, for example, if you have a toilet 
uh, there, are, there are pipings, there are pipes that are connecting the toilet um, uh, to the piping. To, to the water, so it can it can um, it can run. The water can route out of the pipes because they they just they just crash, um, and it can uh, the water runs out. Um, it's causing significant damage to the households. Actually, uh, the statics statistics says that it's the major cause of household damage for the insurance companies. So uh, we created a water leakage detector, a detector de fuego de agua. Uh, 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 that once there is a once there is a water leak, it sends a message over the Sigfox network, and the user sees it on the screen, or the insurance company sees uh, the information on on the main screen, and they can call the client proactively and say, "We think there is a leak um, in your household, um, and we can send our technician to stop the water." Uh, stop the main um, main valve that is connecting your household uh, to the water, and we can prevent the damage. So basically, from for the insurance companies, uh, we are saying to the customer that we are rather preventing the damage than um, than paying the money afterwards that the damage is caused. Um, um, we also saw the usage of the water leakage detectors on boats. Uh, so, for example, um, you can use the same water leakage detector uh, for, for boats. So um, we can, again, get the device out of the, out of the plastic housing. So we have the, just the PCB, which is just the electronics that's inside. We mount an external sensor wires, and then we put these wires into, into the bottom of the boat, into, into the bottom part of the boat, and then we can detect if the boat is flooded or not. Um, we also saw the usage of uh, the water leakage detector uh, in server rooms. Uh, uh, where are the computers, the room of, of computers? Because the computers are normally uh, in, in big computer rooms that are cooled by water. Um, so, so you can detect if, if the water uh, leaks out or so on. We also see usage of water leakage detectors um, um, uh, for the rainwater, so um, 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 I saw a lot of constructions in Mexico that are like of poor quality. Uh, the roofs are of poor quality, and and the rainwater can, water can enter uh, enter the households. So you can even detect the rainwater. Or uh, what happened actually to myself uh, is that we can detect the uh, the uh, the water that uh, the, the wastewater. Uh, that runs out of the the, the the sewage of the of the of the black water or the gray water as we call it that runs out of the streets and can flood uh, the household. So that's um, that's a that's another uh, device we we created. It's a simple, a really simple device. If you connect these, if you connect the two uh, two small pads that are on the bottom, you see on the bottom that it sends the Sigfox message. Um, the uh, the picture on the right side is an insurance company uh, in Czech Republic that is announcing uh, an, an insurance product based on Simpleek that is uh, delivering a service uh, for water leakage prevention in Czech households. We have delivered so far uh, thousands of these devices to this insurance company and the project is ongoing. Um, um, I know that like we have been there um, uh, as, as I told you before uh, I worked for the operator in Czech Republic and um, and, um, and in different countries across Europe so we find out that sometimes the signal uh, the Sigfox signal is not really perfect in the places uh, where we want to install the devices so that's why we created a, a coverage check tool so um, we call it a check fox. Uh, it's a device that was basically designed for ourselves uh, as, the as the primary use case. It was designed for ourselves. Uh, we were measuring as a Sigfox operator, we were measuring uh, the coverage. But then we realized also our clients or the partners, I mean, I mean like you, most probably a lot of, a lot of, a lot of you listening to this webinar are partners of, uh, of WND. 
Mexico and other countries in, in Latin America. Uh, you are suffering, um, suffering sometimes that there is no, no signal at the places you want to install your sensors. So that's why we created this cover check tool. So um, uh, simply what it does, uh, we have Sigfox radio in it. We have a GSM. We have also Wi-Fi and GPS, uh, Global Positioning System. So what it does, so um, it sends the Sigfox message over the Sigfox network. The message is received or not received by the Sigfox base stations. Then we send additional data via GSM because the additional data can't fit into the Sigfox message. The additional data, for example, is the orientation of the device because for the proper uh, measurement of a Sigfox coverage, you need the proper orientation of the device uh, because it can, it can really affect uh, the, the measurement. Then, then uh, we are sending the GPS position, so basically where you are measuring uh, the coverage. We are also sending the MAC addresses that are around the device, so you can then compare the precision of GPS, Sigfox built-in geolocation service, and Wi-Fi positioning service. So measure what is the difference in between these localization services. So we upload all these information through GSM, and then uh, we show you uh, on the screen of the device uh, of the check quotes. We show you the base stations that are getting the signal, the quality of the signal, number of repetitions, and a lot of information about the quality of the signal at the place you are, you are installing your devices. And at the same time, we are, of course, logging all the messages to, to our, uh, our platform. And then we can draw you on the map all the measurements, uh, we can draw you the, the difference between uh, different localization services. We can give you, for example, uh, measurements through driving. So you can drive with the, with the checkbox and measure the coverage on the road. You are going to use your devices, uh, your, um, uh, your devices that you will be installing for, for your clients. So you can measure first the signal. So this is another uh, use case, another device, and another use case we have been we have been using a lot in Czech Republic because sometimes um, uh, you really struggle with a signal. Um, you know that WND most probably is providing also the micro base stations uh, to support their signal, uh, so you can first do the measurement with the with the Czech Fox device, then install the micro base station, um, and be sure that there is signal at the place where you want to install. Uh, install the devices uh, for your clients. And on the right side, you, for example, see this is, a, this is an installation of, of, uh, of a vase container. We are using, uh, we were using SAMI, Spanish provider of devices. So we were using like um, sensors that are measuring uh, the fill level of the waste bin. And we were measuring for every installation for every installation, we were first measuring uh, whether there is a signal on the place where we are going to mount the sensors or not. It was really necessary because if you go underground, uh, sometimes you really suffer with the, um, well, with the signal outages, sometimes just few messages out of, um, out of the device uh, arrive to the Sigfox backend. So you have to be sure that you are delivering the service uh, with quality. So um, I think I'm on time. Uh, we have now, Beatrice, I will give you my word. Uh, now we have time for questions and answers. Um, am yes, I right, have, Beatrice? Yeah, we have some questions already. OK, perfect. And, and uh, everyone can write if they, you have any more questions um, in the chat or in the question box. Yeah, and sorry Do you again. Do the for, questions in Spanish or English? Um, I can handle both. Sorry for switching from Spanish to English, but I was not really feeling comfortable with uh, with uh, with my with my Spanish because I'm I'm losing it. So I, I switched to English. Sorry for that, guys. Okay, first question from Luis. Mm -hmm. um, Tus dispositivos funcionan con zona 4? Sí, uh, todos nuestros dispositivos son uh, multizone. 
uh, pues como hemos cambiado desde el, desde el, desde el uh, modem visual, hemos cambiado a um, ST Micro Spirit 2, que es el, uh, que es el um, radio uh, más nuevo de ST Micro. Todos los dispositivos uh, están capaces de, uh, de hacer todas las zonas. Pues, uh, pues sí, funcionamos también en la zona 4, en la zona 2, todas las zonas. Hay seis zonas en yeah. ese momento. Okay. La zona 6 es India. Pues uh, lo que tenemos en el dispositivo en este, uh, Beatriz lo sabe porque ha, ha hecho, ha hecho, uh, ha hecho uh, pruebas. El ejer ejer ejercicio con, conmigo, que podemos cambiar la zona. Uh, solo con el botón, pues si teclamos el botón, no. si hacemos un, una cosa en el dispositivo, podemos cambiar uh, la zona. No necesitamos downlink, lo podemos hacer solo por, por botón, cambiar la zona. Sí. Eh, Again, bueno. I will switch to English. Again, this was a function that we needed because we are traveling with the, with the devices around the globe. And we want to show the customers that uh, the functionality of the device. So we are basically once we get to the uh, to the aircraft, um, we, for example, use it as a tracker in RC1. And once we arrive to uh, to uh, United States, Mirka is now in in Miami. So she she just she just switch the device into uh, Radio Zone 2 in Miami. And the same device sends de sends messages on on the U.S. network in Miami. Okay, next question: um, Is SimplePack certified for Zone Two? Um, yeah, good question. Thank you very much. Um, at the moment, we are like two days ago. We were in the certification laboratory for uh, for the for for the RC two and four. Basically, what we know that we are complying with zero uh, with uh, classification zero U, so it means we are best in class device. I don't know. If the, I don't know if you know about the qualification classification of the devices, the, um, of the of the quality certification Sigfox. But um, basically, we, we know that we are uh, we are in the in the uh, zero U, but now we are uh, finishing the uh, verified certification. It means the modem, the part of the transceiver. So now we are doing the transceiver part. It will be finished most probably. I'm going to uh, Labesh next week. So it will be finished most probably uh, pretty soon in 14 days. And then we, are, we go for the Sigfox ready, which means uh, the device certification. Um, but what we know at the moment is that we are, we will be definitely class zero. Class zero. So Great. at the moment, what what we uh, suggest to our customers is to either register the devices in Sigfox backend as prototypes, or um, or you can even register it, uh, um, but with a like certificate. For if if you use it not for commercial purposes, you can use it like this. But um, definitely, if you are signed up for our newsletter, you can do a, uh, you can do so. At simple hardware, simplehw.eu, uh, you will be notified once the device is certified for RC2. Uh, but it will be pretty soon, and still the device works. So it's just about you know certification. Sigfox certification is pretty difficult to obtain, um, and um, if you do multi-zone device, it's even more difficult to obtain the certification. So we are pretty proud that uh, at the moment we have uh, RC1 and RC3, and uh, we are heading for RC2, 4, 5, and 6 in coming month. Thank but it's you. still it's still not not anything against doing business with us. Thank you, Rekla. Okay, uh, um, we have a lot more questions. In places like Mexico, where coverage is not uh, full, is there a problem in using this device along the country uh, for using for yeah. positioning? Yeah, 
Um, good question, really good question. Okay, so um, <laughs> where to begin? So, um, so trackers, um, if you want to use trackers, you have basically um, kind of two options or the business normally ask you um, to, or the business value mostly for trackers is knowing where the goods is, um, but mostly in which manufacturing facilities the goods is, or for example, where the, where the cages that are, uh, that you transfer uh, the, uh, the goods in where are, in which manufacturing facilities they are. Um, so what you can do, for example, is ask uh, WNB Mexico to cover these manufacturing facilities for you and they can give you additional coverage. So then you have like spotty coverage and then you can say, okay, once the device arrives at the manufacturing facility, I will know it because there will be coverage. So what you can do is cover basically the spots you want to know, uh, you want to secure, for example, you want to, uh, you want to know if the bases are located, where if the devices are uh, located, there or not. So it, the first thing you can do is additional coverage, okay? And uh, the, second, the second thing you can do is, you know, just bring as big deal or bring big deal to WND Mexico and they will roll out uh, the network much faster because it's like mutual approach. The network comes with the devices, uh, like the money from the devices will bring money to the, to the network operator. So once you have a bigger deal, I think there will be no problem for WND Mexico to cover very quickly uh, a large uh, zones uh, with additional coverage. Exactly, so contact me for that. Yeah, contact that. Really. <laughs> but, but basically that's what we, what we did in, in Czech Republic. So if you, if, uh, for, for tracking or what they did with uh, DHL in Germany, so they started to roll out the network. I think the, the coverage uh, was something around 70% in, in Germany. And once the deal for DHL was signed, uh, they roll out um, um, almost hundreds, um, 500 more base stations for this deal. Uh, so now the, the coverage in Germany is much better. And, and they can do, uh, they can do uh, country white tracking uh, for DHL in Germany. Um, so this is, this is how, you, how you do it basically. Uh, if you bring business to WND Mexico or like you cooperate with WND Mexico and, and you are bringing value, they will, they will, they will, they will cover. Yes, and we also have the micro base station that can also help in some cases. That was basically the, the thing you see here on the picture, the Sigfox micro base station. It looks like a rotor. Um, it's a really small device. It can operate on, on solar power. Um, uh, it can operate even without, um, without fixed connectivity. I mean, on, on some uh, cellular connectivity. Um, so it, uh, it don't necessarily have to be connected uh, by cable. Uh, there can be a GSM dongle. And it works pretty well. Um, for example, if you are covering um, 10 per 10 kilometer uh, area, no problem. Cover it one uh, with one base station. It's pretty pretty good. And you see it side by side with a check fox. So first you do the measurement. Uh, you send to WND Mexico that we are. You're having issues with with a signal at the places you give them the protocol of the measurement and then they go and uh, install additional coverage for you i will just Thank roll you. back um yeah okay so we have a, um a bunch of questions that i'm gonna turn into one big question that is mm -hmm. about um where can they buy it what's the price um yeah how easy is it, it is to import if there if there's a minimum yeah, I can. I will share the presentation today with everyone, and I can um, share the link for your yeah, yeah. 
your Thank you, web Beatrice. page, but uh, if you can tell us more about this. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think like um, the most important is I just, you know, uh, the device, um, we can sell you the devices from, um, you can you can buy it in Mexico from uh, from our preferred uh, distributor because it's not really easy to buy it um, in Europe and then send it to Mexico and so on. So you can contract contact batteries or um, or the guys around batteries uh, uh, to get the devices. But anyway, we sell them on our eShop, so you can go to our to our eShop and and talk to us directly. Uh, the price the price really differs uh, um, with with the with the range of sensors you want to have in the device. So basically what I'm showing you on these two slides, is the device that is equipped with all the sensors and is capable of delivering multiple use cases. You can imagine combining accelerometer with position. So for example, um, 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 once, once the device stays still, then you are sending the position. So tracing, tracking of packages um, and so on. Or you can use, for example, combination just with temperature and without Wi-Fi. So it's it's like a um, temperature uh, temperature only. So you put it into the track, and you are just monitoring the temperature of the track. Uh, we can use it, for example, for fridges with uh, with with cold beverages or with Coca-Cola or I don't know uh, what brand you can imagine, or with 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 cerveza, with beer. Uh, so we can provide you with different custom SKUs. And the price range is from around 15 euros or 15 euro dollars, uh, 15 dollars, sorry, to the maximum configuration is 34, 3, 4 uh, euros at the moment. And this is a this is like a list price. So again, I will repeat it again. If you will bring us a bigger deal, uh, we can manufacture the devices for you much cheaper. Um, so if you are talking about thousands of devices or tens of thousands of devices, we can go even much lower. What we do with Sigfox in France or, or, on, or in Spain, we are talking about, about much bigger deals and then we can give them pretty good discount and we can give you margin uh, out, of, out of our pricing. Thank you. Um, there's also, well, we have a couple more questions. Um, Alessandro says sometimes the implementation of API 6 is can be a little difficult for so many uh, operation modes. So yeah. do you have a software where, uh, that they can use to make it simpler to configure the payload? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I don't know if you I switched the screen to the platform we have. We can see it, yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so we know that um, as the device is really capable, there is, a, there is a plenty of sensors in it and the combination of the sensor, we found out uh, more than 50 use cases that you can use it for a uh, combination of, for example, a light sensor uh, with, uh, with temperature and with, uh, with position for tracking of, of medical uh, transport uh, imagine, for example, a blood transport uh, or medical samples that are traveling around the globe. We know so far that that that, that there is a company that is that is uh, that is moving um, like thousands of uh, packages with medical samples uh, from the United States to Europe every day, every single day. Um, so they can just put it into the package and and they and they track the temperature. Uh, they tracked if the box with the medical sample was open or closed, and they can even uh, even even track the package. So, um, so we find out that it's pretty difficult uh, to decode the messages we are sending from the device. Um, still, uh, the documentation for the messages we are sending is open. Everyone can find on the internet on our on our on our web the way how to decode the messages we are not really platform agnostic we don't lock you to to any platform we know that the sigfox ecosystem wants to use their own platform um, most of the times you are integrating to the to the clients platforms so uh, we are not lock, locking you 
But anyway, if you want to go quickly and, for example, do a quick POC with a customer, we have created what we call the IO Frog platform. You can find it on, uh, on iofrog.com. And uh, basically, you can see that you can switch the device into a tracker. So you are tracking the goods. This is a, this is a live live device I was showing to you uh, during the presentation. So this is the live data uh, decoded out of the device um, from MAC addresses with a map. Then this is another device. Um, actually, the device I'm holding in my hat, in my hand, sorry, um, I was showing to DHL in Czech Republic today. And you see uh, the, uh, the movement of the device. So basically I was I was sitting still um, um, after after the morning hours till 4 p.m. and then I started to shake with the device. And I, as I talk, I shake with the device and it's still sending messages and you can see that it's doing the vibro diagnostic as we say. So again, I will repeat it again. If you stick it to some engine or if you stick it to an excavator machine, if you or to a drill or whatever moving device you can, you can send these patterns and say to the leasing companies if the device is, uh, is leased or not. We can also on the platform out of the box, once you register device, it's pretty easy. Just go here, register new device. You know, you can even, even do the coverage checked by the, by the Sigfos geolocation API. But what you do is you just register device by ID, select the device you want to use, simple hardware in this case. Uh, the platform is supporting much more than just uh, than just devices or simple hardware I was talking about. Go next, connectivity, you can buy online or you can ask uh, WND and have your own connectivity. You're unlocking you to the connectivity and then you are done. And you have your devices. Um, and the devices, you just switch them into different modes of operation just by one setting. So you say, okay, I want a device that is tracking, for example, uh, free fall. So um, I, what we use it for is, for example, the for forklifts. If forklifts are banging into the shelves or not. So we switch it into don't drop me. You say update and then extra long press the device like this for six seconds and via downlink, via Sigfox downlink, the device will receive the new configuration and it's switched into different mode of operation. Once it finished blinking, just a second, I hope I switched the, the correct one. It seems so, you already see that extra long press was detected uh, by the device and it's switching into different mode of operation. Sigfox downlink is about 30 to 50 seconds uh, for the device to receive the new configuration. Uh, you can even reconfigure the device uh, without using the long press. So uh, with a repetitive message uh, that we call heartbeat that is that can be configured to be sent for example every 48 hours or every two days three days um, it's up to you you can for example reconfigure the device uh, once a day and now i will do a short press and then we will see that the device most probably switch into different mode i'm doing a live demo nothing is prepared so i hope it will work <laughs> sometimes downlink is a bit less reliable than Sigfox <laughs> uplink so, so maybe I should do it again. I will see. I will talk meanwhile. Uh, but this is this is how we normally switch the mode of operation. There is another device I was using. I was traveling uh, with to to the UAE, so to the um, to the Arabian. Uh, again, the screenshot I showed you before, last month. Um, so this is the real life device and we are using it for light detection so we know if the device is is closed in a box or opened so if you, if it is in the box or not 
Um, here you see the heartbeat message. This is a read on off uh, mode of operation that is for, for, the, for the magnet, for the iman. So you can detect the door opening uh, if you have a magnet and so on and so on. So that's why we created IOFROG, this platform. So you can quickly go to POC. You can quickly show to your customers uh, that the devices that the device work and you can quickly go to, to real business. So if I answered your question, I will be yeah, just I think it's clicking answer. around and uh, maybe I will highlight uh, uh, one more thing. Um, again, it's about business. I'm really, um, I just, you know, what I, what I want to highlight that I'm not really here to sell you the devices. Uh, we are on the same boat. I rather want you to go for real money as soon as possible, because, um, if you are not earning money soon, uh, you will leave IOT soon, you know? So you have to be really quick and really get to the money questions and really start to earn money. So as, as quickly as possible, go to, the, go to the POC and prove the value of the devices as fast as possible. And that's why we created, created the device that is multipurpose. You can switch it into different modes. You can show to the customer it can serve as a tracker, it can serve as a, as a, as a guarding device, it can serve as, as, a, as a viper diagnostic device, as a security device and so on. And that's why we created the platform. And if you put it together, you have what I call like not only the, the network, that was my beginning of the, of the webinar, that Sigfox is not, Sigfox is just the rat, just the, just the network. But what you need is the device. Uh, then you need the platform you see on the screen. And then you need uh, the business, you know, the people that will be uh, consuming the services that you built on top of the data. That's the most important. Thank you, Maclo. Um, Diego Bravo from Ecuador says hi. And um, he wants to use a simple pack for containers from Asia to Ecuador. Mm -hmm. Asking um, about precision and using Monarch. Yes. Um, so um, at the moment, and Beatrice know, knows it, um, we are kind of uh, testing the functionality of Monarch. Uh, Monarch is at the first, um, I have to say it's, a, it's like a buzzword. Um, it's really technologically really difficult to achieve, um, um, achieve like worldwide tracker, even on Sigfox. But, um, the main problem is that uh, for Monarch Tracker, you need, um, uh, you need the, the Monarch beacons. Uh, basically, there's the functionality that the base station is emitting um, like, a, like a lighthouse, Alfaro. Uh, it's emitting the radio zone that you are in, and the device has to listen for the radio zone. If the device is switched into listening mode, uh, it consumes a lot of energy. So if, if you have a small device or even a bigger device, if the device listens for, uh, for a longer time, it, it easily runs out of battery life. So um, you have to be really clever in the device to be able to, to call your device a Monarch Tracker. Otherwise, it will be just, um, just a cheap piece of plastic that will run out of battery in 14 days. So what we did, uh, we did tests uh, that, that at the moment are successful. So we can send the device in a very stupid, you know, like almost always listening to Monarch beacons from Czech Republic to now we are sending it to Hong Kong or Singapore. And the device switches and it operates in RC1 first in Europe and then in RC, uh, RC4 in Hong Kong. But the thing is that it's consuming a lot of energy and uh, we can send the device as a one-way tracker. So we can send it, uh, for example, for packages that are, um, that are seven days uh, traveling just one way. Um, because then we run, for example, consume for one, uh, one way, we consume half of the battery life. Uh, because it's a really stupid mode of operation, we are listening basically all the time. But what, uh, what you can do um, uh, is the business logic on the side of the device. So you can use sensors that are on the, on the device 
that will be switching off the listening for Monarch Beacons or uh, switching off or on the listening for Monarch Beacons. So I don't know if you know about the, uh, most probably you know about the Louis Vuitton case uh, where they put the trackers to uh, Louis Vuitton cases to the high value, high value, uh, high value bags. And what they use is a barometric, is a barometric, uh, is the air pressure basically. So they use uh, the air pressure and they know if the device is in the aircraft. And once the device enters into the air, they know that they will be switching the zone. So the device basically is not listening all the time for, for, uh, for Monarch beacons, but is only listening for Monarch beacons at the moment when it enters the air when it enters the, I mean, uh, when it's in, in the aircraft. So you know that the flight will be most probably around a few hours. And then you know you can switch on the listening. So imagine, for example, you, the device is traveling around Europe, no listening, so it's consuming almost no battery. It can live for years in Europe, uh, giving you position in Europe. But once you enter the aircraft, you rise uh, to the air, the barometric pressure will uh, will go down and you and the device will start to listen to the monarch beacons and when it's when it arrives to Mexico for example it will switch to RC RC2 so, RC4 sorry no, <laughs> no, two, two. Two, yeah uh, it will switch to RC2 and and it will it will work again seamlessly so Yes, our device can work as a Monarch tracker, but it's always about the business functionality. It's always about being really clever of, uh, of the operation. So um, how, how many times a day you are doing the Wi-Fi sniffing, the Wi-Fi positioning, because it consumes also a lot of energy. How many times a day you are listening for the Monarch beacons when you switch it um, to, to the operation for, for listening and so on. So, um, really good question. Um, now we have in the manufacturing a newer version. It will be still the same form factor. I already have the PCBs. We already have the firmware for it. And it will contain the barometric pressure. And we are thinking about using the accelerometer. Um, actually, a bit more precise accelerometer that we are using at the moment. But on the new PCB, we have a much more precise accelerometer. And we will be using it for detecting the vibration of the aircraft. So we can decide uh, whether the device is in the aircraft and, uh, or not. So we won't be uh, we won't be relying on the barometric pressure, but we will we'll be relying on the specific vibration of the aircraft when it takes off. So we can switch the device into listening and save power. So to wrap it up, sorry for a, a long uh, monologue about about Monarch, but if anybody asks me about Monarch, I always I always like uh, get back to the person with a question, okay, and tell me the business logic, tell me uh, what you want to track, uh, when you want to track it, uh, what's your expected better life, uh, what's your expected price range and so on. So always Monarch means a lot of questions and a lot of business discovery with, uh, with, your, end with your end customer, with the client. But yes, we are, we are Monarch capable, we are multi-zone and we can do Monarch listening. Thank you. Okay, so we have all, um, other questions, but um, I will be sending all of the documentation um, to everyone. So it's they... already getting dark here in Czech. Because we <laughs> I have, can see that, yeah. We have, yeah, um, I'm getting, I'm turning to the dark side, um, we are 6 p.m. already. But anyway, ask me any questions. I'm, yeah, I'm... I will, we will have like one more question. Um, people, some, we have some questions about the frequency, uh, of the reporting of messages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, like, can that's it be configured or not? Or. Yeah. It's a, um, actually we, um, uh, like there are limits with Sigfox and I was all, when I started with Sigfox, I we were always, uh, talking about the limits of Sigfox 140 messages and messing the 140 and 144. Nobody knows what was the difference. But the four is actually the service messages that you are receiving after downlinks. But anyway, um, we are, you know, always saying, yeah, 140 messages for uplink, uh, four messages for downlink. That's the limit. That's the hard limit. But it's kind of, you know, there's when you big when when you are starting with Sigfox, you you can say this. But once you get a bit 
uh, deeper into the Sigfox protocol, uh, you will realize that there are ways uh, how you can um, how you can um, how you can send much more messages that, than than just 140 a day. So, what you can do is basically the duty cycle uh, that is regulated by FCC in in United States and I think in Mexico also, and uh, the uh, the the regulatory office in in European Union. It's about just about the duty cycle. So basically, the time in the air uh, of the radio transmission. So what we, what we can do is uh, transmit uh, faster. Standard Sigfox message in uh, in Europe is 100 bits per second. That's the bit rate of the transmission. But you can switch the device and just by one downlink, I can show you on the platform. Just go here and most probably, I hope I will find it somewhere. It's somewhere here, radio power, maybe, yeah. Radio configuration zone, somewhere in here, power amplifier, Monarch. I can't find it really quickly. Uh, 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 it's somewhere here. Radio control, confirmation. Somewhere in here, you can just switch it by one downlink and switch it to 600 bits per second. So basically you are six, time, six times less in the air so you can send six times more messages than 140. So that's one way, uh, or that's one uh, uh, that's one thing you can do with uh, with the limit of the duty cycle. The second uh, second thing you can do is the again time in the air. So if you are sending smaller Sigfox messages, you can be uh, the radio transmission is uh, shorter, so you can be a bit more in the air than uh, than for longer messages. Imagine 14 bytes is the is the metadata for Sigfox protocol for every message. 12 bytes is for for the effective payload for the data that are in the Sigfox message. So if you use all the 12 bytes, for example, for two uh, for two MAC addresses, uh, every MAC address is six bytes. So if you fit two MAC addresses, you are you fill in all the Sigfox uplink message, 12 bytes. So if you are send, sending the, the, the full Sigfox message, basically you are uh, on 140 messages a day. But uh, if you send only one bit, or you can even send a message that does not contain data, basically. It's just nothing in the message, no effective payload. So you are saving then 12 bytes of the transmission, you are sending only 14 bytes of the metadata, then you are basically on a half time in the air. So you can, it can give you 280 messages a day, just by you know, lowering the number of bytes transmitted uh, through the network and lowering the time in the air. And, and the third option uh, we normally uh, provide on the device, um, and we have it implemented in, um, in every device we sell, is then you can switch the transmission from three repetitions uh, to one repetition only. Uh, sometimes you hear about frame, uh, so number of frames, uh, but it's the same repetition frame is the same. So the Sigfox protocol is designed so that uh, every, Sigfox, every standard Sigfox message is repeated three times in default, um, sent in different radio frequencies um, uh, in different times. That's the time diversity and frequency diversity that is basically uh, giving you more reliability on delivery of the message. But if you are on a place with a really good coverage and you know it, or if you need much more messages, I mean like, volume uh, rather than reliability, then you can switch the device that is not sending three repetitions, but is sending only one repetition. That means that you are sending, you are basically a third time in the air, so you can send three times more messages. So if you combine all together, 
Um, and I think the 600 bits only apply for radios on one. It does not reply for, uh, apply for radios on two. But if you combine one frame message um, with, with less bytes, you can definitely get uh, three times more. And if you are in, in zones that support uh, switching a bit rate, then you can be 18 times more messages just like uh, officially supported by, by the protocol and officially supported by the regulation. No issue. So then I will finish, uh, sorry, I will finish with, uh, I, I started with, uh, with, with, uh, with the, uh, I, I started saying that I was always talking about limits um, uh, during my first year being with Sigfox, but then you realize that the limits are kind of soft and, and um, it's not really about limit. And if you are asked by customer about limits, um, always face back with questions. Why limits? You know, do you really need so many messages? Why? And so on and so on. And then you realize being with the customer that either the use case is not a good fit for Sigfox or uh, you can kind of play with it and, and deliver what the customer needs. Thank you, Vaclav. So I think we will end it here. Thank you so much for, for sharing this information with us. I will be sending everyone all the documentation that I have about SimplePack. So if you, after that, still have questions, you can write me and I can try to answer. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Yeah, I just, um, just uh, last word, Beatrice, if I can. Um, it's, um, it's just about, you know, always, it's about delivering the, the value to the end customer. Um, it's not about the device. You can choose whatever device you want. Uh, it's not about the platform. You can choose whatever platform you want. It's, it's even not about the Sigfox and, and, you know, like Sigfox only. You can deliver the value on different platform. Sorry, on different, on different network. It's just about always try to get as soon as possible to the value behind the deal or behind the problem you are solving with the customer. Uh, that's, that's the driver that can drive you through the journey of IoT. Um, if you will postpone these questions and if you will postpone and just play with devices, just play with messages and limits and, you know, being technical, it will last you much longer uh, to get to the point where the customer can finally decide. Then, uh, if you start with, with money first and delivering value. So that's why we push so hard for quickly deliver proof of value on already made platform on devices that are already supporting the use cases you need. That's, that's why we created simple pack and that's why we created uh, IO frog and that, that's why we are really happy to sell it because it helps us uh, to sell. And that's, that's what, what's always the best create the solution for you and then maybe someone will buy it. So thank you, Beatrice. Thank you, W Indy. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you everyone for, for, for listening. I'm so sorry switching to English, but yeah, my mini well no is, um, I'm not, I'm not so good anymore in Spanish. I'm I don't really... agree, but okay. <laughs> if your Spanish is great. <laughs> yeah. But Thank once so in, once I'm in Mexico, I'm, I think uh, after some some drinks, I'm much better in my speech. <laughs> okay, so thank you everyone for your time, and I will be sending you all the information. Perfect. Thank you, Beatrice. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. Bye bye. bye.